Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you the What's In My Soccer Bag video for the month of March 2015. Now for those that are unfamiliar with this series, I have the opportunity to try out a lot of different products on a monthly basis, and what I like to do with this particular series is highlight all of the best products that I found myself using throughout the previous month. This includes apparel, shin guards, soccer balls, footwear, pretty much everything you could possibly think of that you could jam into a soccer bag. If I thought it was really good and I used it throughout the previous month, I feature it in the What's In My Soccer Bag videos. Of course, all of these items aren't necessities by any means, but they're all good products and worth highlighting nonetheless. Now, of course, all the items that you see in today's video, you can purchase for yourself by clicking the very first link down below in the description of this video. It's going to take you to the What's In My Soccer Bag page on my website, SoccerReviewsForYou.com. And on that page, you will find Buy It Now links for all of the different items that you see in today's video, along with exclusive SR4U coupon codes that allow you to pick them up below their normal retail prices. So if you do see something in today's video that you're interested in purchasing for yourself, first link down below in the description, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the What's In My Soccer Bag video for March 2015. All right, so for the month of March, the weather definitely did improve in my area. It certainly wasn't warm, but it was above freezing. I want to say 80% of the days just slightly above freezing, which did allow all of that crazy amount of snow we got over the winter to melt, uh, which in turn kind of flooded the soccer fields. A lot of them are either slightly submerged underwater or just complete mud piles at the moment. I know a lot of you guys have been asking when are the playtest videos going to come back. That hopefully will happen very, very soon. I'm just waiting on field conditions that I can film at to improve. So stay tuned for the playtest videos. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about those. Nonetheless, let's get into the what's in my soccer bag video, which is what we're doing right now. This is the bag I've been using, obviously. This is the Nike Brasilia size large duffel bag in red. Retail price is $50 US, which is pretty pricey for a duffel bag. I will admit that. With that being said, the reason why I really like this particular one is because of its size. It's gigantic. It has a huge center compartment, large side pockets, all the straps you could want, and it allows you to pretty much carry everything and anything that you would possibly want to put in this thing. If you want to have a combination of shoes, apparels, and soccer balls, it holds that very, very easily. Lots of water, side compartments for your phone and stuff like that. Or even if you just want to have one pair of shoes and four or five soccer balls, it fits all of that in one single bag, which is really, really nice. You don't have to carry around a really big ball bag or something like that. Uh, so that's it. Brasilia size large duffel bag, um, $50 US, but that's enough about that. We'll get into the inside because that is what everybody is here to see. They want to see what is in the soccer bag. So here is the first item that I've been using pretty consistently for over a year now. These are the Storelli Body Shield slider shorts they you can get them for about 54 dollars us so they're pretty expensive i will say that but the quality is definitely there i've been using pretty much the same couple of pairs for over a year now the durability is fantastic um, and they're just great soccer specific compression shorts the compression short part is awesome plus they have the added benefit of the pour on padding on either side of the leg it's low profile padding low profile protection that you can't really see or feel but when you do take those side impacts uh, to your leg you definitely will notice a big difference in terms of how how much you feel it and how much extra protection that you wouldn't normally have that you're getting from these slider shorts so again if you're looking for some of the best soccer specific uh, uh, compression shorts on the market those are definitely some that i can strongly recommend next i have a regular pair of shorts that i'm going to be honest with you guys the main reason why i picked them up is because I was very curious as to why they were so expensive. These are the Nike GPX Strike Shorts. They retail for $50 US, believe it or not. Extremely expensive, more expensive than the license shorts. So if you were to buy uh, from Nike, for example, a pair of Manchester United shorts, they're only gonna run you between $40 and $45. These are $50 and they're not licensed to any team at all. Um, it has this really cool design. It's a volt yellow color that fades to white. There are obviously different colorways available as well. You have a black stripe down either side of the leg and then an embroidered black nike swoosh there on the front it's a really high quality dry fit material you have pockets that are actually zipper pockets kind of hidden on either side um, and they're just really nice shorts are they worth 50 dollars honestly i don't think any shorts are worth 50 dollars but the quality is definitely there so if you did see these we're thinking about picking them up uh, but we're just kind of skeptical of the price i can tell you that they're nice shorts and as long as you can justify the price to yourself i would say go for it next um, i have a training top now this is the new uh, Adidas Argentina 2015 training top, which I think looks really, really cool. It does mimic their Tiro jerseys to a certain extent as far as the design is concerned. And I picked this one up because I'm a fan of Argentina and I really like how this one looked in particular. You have kind of like a 
grayish slate blue type of color on the bottom and then you have a darker navy blue on the top that pinstripe design the adidas branding obviously the argentina crest you have the adidas stripes on the shoulders that interchange between light blue white and then back to light blue and on the back it's left more or less completely blank it's also a um, Addy Zero material, so it's extremely thin, very, very lightweight, and just comfortable overall. This guy is going to run you about $50 US, so again, it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but it is, again, authentic licensed apparel, so that is kind of what you can expect um, from both Adidas, Nike, and Puma when it comes to those types of products. Now, again, because it was still a little bit colder outside, there were, there was some cold weather gear that was required in order to kind of stay out there, if you will. Um, so these, this is the um, uh, Puma Arsenal uh, fleece training top, which is really, really nice. It does have the quarter zip, as you guys can see. I thought this was particularly cool looking. Um, I like that it's kind of outlined in red. You have the gray in the middle. One shoulder is white, one shoulder is navy blue. You got embroidered uh, Puma branding on the, the front of the shirt, as well as on both shoulders here. You have the embroidered Fly Emirates um, sponsor on the front, which I thought was pretty cool. Obviously, the Arsenal crest right there. And uh, it's just a really cool looking uh, fleece top. It's extremely comfortable because of that fleece material. And I have no complaints, especially the price. The price is $50 US, which isn't cheap, but considering it's a licensed product and it's a fleece sweater, that's not bad. We paid $50 for the Argentina training top and the shorts. Um, so to have $50 for this, I honestly don't think that's too bad of a deal. Plus you can wear it casually if you want. I think it's a pretty good looking sweater as well. Next, as far as other cold weather gear goes, I have this. these guys right here. These are the um, Adidas Tiro 15 uh, training pants. You guys have probably seen these before. They obviously have that tapered design towards the ankle. They're soccer-specific training pants. You can pick these up in a variety of different colors. They retail for about $45 US, so uh, between $40 and $45, depending on the variation that you get. So they are relatively affordable. They have pockets, and if you're looking for soccer-specific training pants, these are some of the best options out there. This obviously being the navy blue and white color variation. So I'll fold this up, put it to the side, and then I actually have a pair of tights. I didn't actually find that I needed the compression tops all that much, but I did find myself wearing the tights still, especially when I didn't want to wear pants. I don't necessarily love play wearing pants while I play. Sometimes you have to just because of how cold it is. Uh, but tights, definitely something that's a great option. If you don't want to wear pants or if you need to be a little bit warmer in a game situation, you can wear these under your shorts and under your socks and stay nice and warm. With really pretty much no extra bulk, you don't really notice that you're wearing it all that much. At least that's what I find. These are just some Under Armour ones. I really like this particular pair. I've tried pretty much everything. I generally tend to prefer Under Armour when it comes to compression gear. Um, these guys you can generally pick up around $50 or so. So again, there will be links to get something like this um, on the uh, What's In My Soccer Bag page on my website. Link down below in the description. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested in something like this for yourself. So I'll just throw that right there to the side. Um, next, we actually have a jacket. Now, this is a jacket that um, a lot of people have been asking me about, and I've been meaning to do a review on it. Unfortunately, it's just been way too cold for this jacket. Now, this is the Nike Select Revolution jacket. I'm sure you guys have seen it somewhere via social media with Nike's advertisements. All of Nike's ads, for whatever reason, show people wearing this jacket in kind of snow and wintry types of situations. And I will tell you this, I got this in the middle of winter, and I tried to kind of wear it uh, throughout the entire week as a winter coat, as kind of the Nike ads which would, su would suggest. And I will tell you that this is by no means a winter coat. It retails for $150, so it certainly is not a cheap jacket. Um, it's cool looking. It's got this kind of see-through type material, this one being the Volt colorway. So you have kind of a Volt mesh layer that runs through the shoulders and kind of the upper half of the jacket that gives it that Volt coloring. And then of course you do have the clear over top. It's very thin. It's almost like a, I don't want to say a thin plastic bag. It's kind of more high quality than that to the touch. Uh, but that's kind of what it looks like. I know a lot of people aren't going to like how this look. I'm not crazy about how it looks, honestly, but it does feel really good. Um, it does a good job of uh, being as warm as it is, considering that it really doesn't have any liner. It's pretty much see-through. So if I put my hand through here, um, you can see it. Uh, which is kind of unusual. So if you were to wear this jacket with a red sweater, the, the jacket for the most part would pretty much just show up as red minus the vault areas, which does look a little bit strange, uh, but it does its job as far as keeping wind out, 
um, and being relatively warm with minimal extra bulk. It also does have that little bit of breathability about it as well. It does have pockets, which is a little bit unusual. They're zipper pockets, uh, but if you actually put anything in the pocket, again, it's completely see-through. So I uh, actually have my phone right here, so I'll show you guys because I think it's kind of funny. Um, I'll just slide it in the pocket here. And as you guys can see, everyone knows that the phone is in the pocket. Hopefully that shows up on camera because I can definitely tell in person. It's just really kind of a silly way to make a jacket in my opinion. It's cool if, if you want a clear jacket, but um, for me, cool for training, not necessarily something I would want to wear casually, but nonetheless, a good product, I think. Uh, it does do what it's supposed to do, which is um, probably the most important thing at the end of the day. Next, let's move on to socks. Now, the socks that I found myself using, just regular socks, are these guys right here. These are the Nike um, Elite Socks. This is actually the new USA Away colorway. So this goes with their USA Away kit. And honestly, I think they're just really cool looking socks. Plus, they feel really good. The Nike Elite Socks, uh, for, specific for soccer, are some of my favorite. Um, this is part of their Stadium Series, obviously. Um, they're anatomically fitted to both the right and the left foot. They have good padding on the underside of the foot. They're a little bit thinner on top, which is really, really nice. And this has this kind of cool gradient fade effect where it's white at the bottom, turns into a navy blue, a uh, royal blue, sorry, and then eventually navy blue right at the top of the sock. And obviously these are full length as well. Plus you get that little bit of extra padding at the ankle, which is really, really nice. So um, those guys are going to run you about $25, which kind of to be expected considering again, this is the authentic licensed a variation of the um, USA Away sock, but nonetheless, high quality socks and something you definitely can't go wrong with. Um, next, as far as other socks go, I have these guys right here. These are true socks. You guys have heard of these $40 retail price um, in the US, pretty much everywhere. They're going to run you about 40 bucks. Um, not particularly cheap, actually very expensive for a single pair of socks, but they do what they're supposed to do. They really do help to eliminate any kind of slippage on the inside of your shoe. So if you were thinking about getting a pair of true socks, you haven't pulled the trigger quite yet. Uh, it is a product that I really can strongly recommend. I know a lot of you guys think that I'm just saying this to say it, but if you've ever tried True Socks, you know that they actually do make a pretty big difference in terms of how your shoes fit and feel. So again, True Socks, strongly recommend them. It really is a fantastic product. As far as shin guards go, we have a shin guard accessory first. These are the Sorelli Body Shield Slider uh, Leg leg guards, sorry. Um, you guys have probably seen these before in my videos as well. This is what I use basically instead of tape to hold up my shin guards. Plus you get the added benefit of pour on padding on the sides of your ankles, as well as down the outside of your shins and calf area. So again, you get that extra protection because of the design of these things. The shin guards can't fall through the bottom, so you don't need any tape or anything like that. They hold your shin guards in place really, really nicely. They're comfortable to wear, minimal extra bulk. Plus you get that extra protection that you wouldn't normally get from a shin guard that doesn't have built in ankle guards. So those guys are going to run you um, about $36, which is pretty inexpensive considering you'll probably spend that much, if not significantly more on tape throughout the entire season to hold your shin guards up anyway. So good product, lasts me a long time. It's the same pair I've been wearing for quite a while now and they're still going strong. Next, as far as shin guards products go, um, I have these guys right here. These are the uh, C6 Agility Carbon Fiber Shin Guards. Normally retail for $150 US. You can pick them up for about $135. Uh, which is very expensive for shin guards, don't get me wrong, but they really are the best of the best. Um, it's a shin guard that I've been using consistently, again, for about a year now. Um, and until I come across anything better, I'm not going to switch because they really are fantastic. They're extremely lightweight, extremely thin, fit really, really well. Um, and they're pretty much the closest thing that you can get to not wearing shin guards while still having maximum protection, which is uh, kind of a best of both worlds situation, which is why this is such a good product. So again, if you're looking for the best of the best as far as shin guards go, quite possibly the last pair of shin guards you'll ever need. C6 Agility, definitely something that I would take a look into um, if you are, again, looking for the best of the best as far as shin guards go. Soccer ball, obviously that's a necessity if you are having, or if you're filling up a soccer uh, soccer bag. So what I have right here is the new Adidas Nativo MLS match ball. Pretty cool looking ball. I really like the overall design. You have a combination of blue and red with obviously a white base. Um, you do have the Canadian maple leaf. You have uh, the star from the American side. Obviously there are Canadian and American MLS teams. Um, that's kind of the theme of this particular design. And I just think it's pretty cool. I like the new MLS logo, honestly. Um, something a little bit different. And uh, it's basically just a variation of the 
uh, ball we saw throughout the World Cup, just with a different color. It retails for $160, so obviously it is pretty expensive. But again, it's a premium high-end match ball, so that's kind of what you would expect. If you want the best of the best, you kind of have to pay for it, unfortunately. Um, next, as far as training footwear goes, I, I've been using these guys quite quite a bit. These are the um, new Nike Flyknit Lunar 3s. I was a big fan of the Lunar 2. The Lunar 3 kind of just came out. It retails for $150, so not particularly the cheap as far as running shoes go, uh, but really, really nice. You get that Flyknit upper, which is extremely comfortable. Flywire through the middle. It helps to hold your foot in place. The Lunar Lawn cushioning setup, which I personally really, really like. And if you're just looking for an extremely comfortable pair of running shoes, can't go wrong with these guys right here. Nike Flyknit Lunar 3. Um, next, as far as footwear goes, I actually found myself using these guys quite a lot. Not this particular pair, the other colorway, um, which is very muddy, which is why I don't have them in the bag. Um, this pair I didn't do a video yet on, so expect to see that coming fairly soon. But these are the new Puma Evo Power 1.2s in the leather upper variation. I was a big fan of the synthetic model, and this month I got around to testing out the leather variation. I have to say I really, really like them. Um, it's not kangaroo leather, it's still calfskin leather material. Um, just like the original Leather Evo Power 1, which I know not everybody's going to be too pleased with, but the quality on this one seems to be better. It's a lot more slimmed down, and as far as leather shoes go, they're very comfortable. They provide that nice, soft kind of cushion touch on the ball, and I really like this stud pattern. You kind of lose some of that flexibility that you would expect from the Evo Power 1.2 in synthetic, because leather obviously isn't going to stretch like an Adapt Light synthetic will, but nonetheless, they're really, really comfortable, and if you're looking for some decent, kind of different leather shoes, then this uh, Evo power 1.2 in leather is definitely something worth looking into and finally the last pair of shoes i have in my bag are actually these guys right here these are the um cr7 silverware um super flies um from nike obviously extremely bright they have that silver glittery effect to them um, obviously everybody has seen these at this point and this is a pair that I've actually been wearing mainly because I'm going to be making a video very very soon on how the actual sparkle effect wears away because obviously that is something that will happen as you wear these things. Uh, this is not the pair that I have been wearing. These are brand new. The pair that I have been wearing uh, don't look so great and they're really really muddy so I didn't want to stick them in the bag with the rest of the stuff that at the moment at least is pretty clean. So um, what's great about the Superfly 4 is it has that nice tight fit. You get that one-to-one -one sensation. It's a very, very responsive shoe. It's a great traction pattern. And also, in conditions like it is right now, when the, wet, when the weather is a little bit colder and generally the fields are extremely wet and muddy, believe it or not, these mid-cut Flyknit models, the same goes for the Magista Obra, they're very, very water resistant. So if you want to keep your feet nice and dry, these mid-cut models from Nike do a fantastic job of that. While it might seem like the Flyknit material, especially the collar, would just absorb water it's so dense and there's so many layers to it it's just not the type of material that really absorbs water you'd have to physically stand in a puddle for like 10 seconds for the water to actually seep through so for the most part you can go through an entire fairly wet training session and have your feet stay completely dry the whole time which is really really nice and kind of unusual the opposite of what you would expect but it's a good experience superfly 4 obviously a very popular shoe uh, you don't need me to tell you that it's a fantastic performer and again if you can justify that 275 dollars price tag a shoe that i can strongly recommend so that is pretty much it for the what's in my soccer bag video for march 2015 hopefully you enjoyed it if you enjoy the series want to continue seeing it happen on a monthly basis be sure to support this video with a like um, again if you guys are interested in any of the products that you saw in today's video be sure to check out the um, first link down below in the description it'll take you to the what's in my soccer bag page on my website where you'll find buy it now links along with exclusive sr4u coupon codes for all of the items that you see in today's video so again first link down below in the description go ahead and check it out if you have any questions i'd be happy to answer them down below in the comment section subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear you can find all my social media information down below in the description as well and other than that guys Hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, thanks for watching.